We're in McAllen, Texas at Zoho Days 2024. We're discussing customer experience, operational excellence, and digital transformation with Taylor Woolsey from Garda World. My role is create an easy experience for the customer and how we either get the data, get the information to deliver on that experience is key to that. Customer experience and improving operations, operations excellence, are really tied closely together. They're essential, they're their partners. Without kind of the vision on our customer experience side of things, what is the point of continuing to improve on the operation side of things? It's just as, usually to save a few dollars, but you're going to eventually feel the effect of that if your customer experience is not the focal point. You need to understand where we're going, why we're going there, and how it benefits our customers. And if it doesn't benefit our customers, then what is the point of putting all these processes, all this operational excellence in place, if we're still not going to provide that experience to their customer that they either want or expect us to have. It strikes me that customer experience, operational excellence, and then we overlay digital transformation, and you have this, this powerful set of concepts that really drive your business forward. 100%. It's people, processes, systems, or product that you can evolve and that you can control and you need all three of them for a positive experience for the customer. If you focus on one, that's fine, that's good, you'll get, get a little bit, but you'll lose out on some of the opportunity that you'll have to provide that experience to that customer, which will then, of course, provide that operational excellence as you focus on that customer's experience and getting them the information that they want to be able to have the experience that they expect. Of course, it's important to have training, hire the best people, uh, there's a lot of focus on that. Um, you know, how we, go to market, how we communicate with our customers. For me, that's a big part of it. As you were thinking through this strategy of enhancing or elevating the operational excellence of the company, what were the underlying foundational elements or how do you go about rethinking an organization to achieve this goal? What are we trying to provide to our customers? What value are we bringing and are we actually truly bringing that? Really evaluating that customer experience. How can we take that to the next level? Are we providing actually what the customer wants or what we think they want is a big part of it. We actually get the feedback directly from the customer. It's usually a lot different than we actually thought it was. I find it interesting that you're talking about operational excellence in terms of customer expectations and meeting their needs as opposed to, well, we're refining our processes to make them more efficient. So your reference point is, is back with the customer. Absolutely, you have to have the vision of where you're going. You know, your processes have to lead you into that. Your training has to lead into that. If your people don't understand, or your processes don't understand the vision or have the end in mind, what direction are you going? And you can't complain when you don't get the results that you're looking for, simply because you didn't have it to start with. So what is the relationship between having that customer end in mind and the processes, the efficiency, all of the threads and pieces that comprise operational excellence at the end of the day? We have different touch points along the customer experience. Right from the beginning, marketing, sales, operations, could be loyalty in the future, could be even collections. What are our touch points associated to that? Could be people that are a part of that touch point, our salespeople, or someone they're talking to on the phone. It could be a product or systems. So their experience with that product, if we're selling a poor product, of course, it's gonna be a poor experience. It's the same thing with our systems that we use. If we are not communicating well with our clients or there is an expectation of how that communication happened and we're not meeting that expectation, of course, we're not providing that value. And our processes are all put those all together, whether it's people and systems and product, of making sure that is simple and clear and concise for the customer. When trying to implement this kind of program of customer experience and to make it consistent across such a large geography of Canada, what kind of obstacles arise? In Canada, there's two languages and different provinces have different rules around those languages that you have to follow. We also have multiple brands associated to that. So Garda World, of course, is a division of many now companies that they've acquired over the years. So multiple brands 
always acquiring, always growing that way. And so it's constant integration to make sure that we actually deliver on a quality customer experience is a challenge. For example, we simply went through an integration myself. So I come from a, a company that Garter acquired as an owner of that company. Garter acquired us and they also have about five other companies they acquired that are similar to us and then we put us together to be a national player. And so just simply going through that integration itself and that customer experience just within that one division, let alone many divisions, and to bring that together to make sure you're consistent with the customer experience from that first sales call to the installation, to a service, to a phone call, um, to the billing. On top of that, we have technology continuously evolving. So it's just the expectations of the clients on what you are giving them, the information you're giving them, how quick you give it to them. Is there a cultural dimension to this, to driving consistency across these various divisions and companies as you're acquiring them? For our company, there's lots of divisions. There's lots of acquisitions all the time. There's new people coming in. A big part of it is training. Garter World, for example, in Canada, have a campus just for training to make sure that we provide that same customer experience or do our best to strive for this same customer experience, no matter what division you're part of, what location you're a part of, or even what language you speak in Canada. For example, there's language laws that everything in Quebec needs to be first and foremost in French. And that can be challenging, of course, because some individuals may be more comfortable working in English. But we're happy to support that. And then we need to be able to help foster those relationships, those environments, those trainings with our staff to ensure that we provide a quality and consistent customer experience. There's also a digital transformation aspect to this as well. Mm -hmm. When we talk about digital transformation, generally that means we're going from a previous state to something new. Mm -hmm. Can you describe that at Garda World? There was an acquisition. We were already using Zoho. So Liberty Security was already using Zoho. Garda World's existing acquisitions were using a specific software for the security industry. And it has been around for many years. So obviously, we've had to evaluate what software we're going to use and what tools we're going to use. And more importantly, I would say is who are we going to be in years to come and what tools or what software is going to allow us to evolve into the next stages as our division continues to grow. So tell us about those tools. We have been a Zoho One user, a Zoho user for about eight years, a Zoho One user for about five years. Liberty Security, which Garter World acquired, uh, started out with two applications, Zoho CRM and Zoho Books, eight years ago. So at Liberty Security, you were using Zoho CRM and Zoho Books. How has that evolved today? When we first started using Zoho, um, was only about 2,500 customers. It wasn't very big. As time went on, Liberty scaled quite quickly to about 30,000 customers across Canada. So as we scaled our business, Zoho CRM, Zoho Books, and then a lot of different applications, whether it was Zoho Forms, even Zoho Expense, something as simple as that, really helped us continue to scale as we grew as a company right up until the acquisition. And so you said that you're using 30 applications from Zoho today? We use about 25 applications. There's some dabbling with some other ones. I wouldn't say we use them as a whole, but we are very comfortable in the Zoho suite today. During the integration, we actually had the VP of IT come and look at our software, of course, and what we're actually using. And he was quite happy and impressed with how we use our software and the versatility of it and what we've grown into even a smaller company. And we recently just went through a um, evaluation of both softwares, you, you know, the traditional security system software, and then on Zoho. And the decision was made to go with Zoho nationally across Canada. So some of that complexity, multiple languages, even multiple brands we're using right now, we chose Zoho. Zoho calls itself the operating system of business. And it sounds like in your case, since you're using so many applications, that that's really true. I'm an advocate because you can control training processes and really the product, and I put systems in there. So Zoho would be a part of that. That really has allowed us to grow as a company as we want to create more complexity, that's enabled us to do so. And we spent zero dollars on consultants and third parties. We went directly to Zoho and we used that. And our people became the experts. As a result, the impact that that individual could have on their department was huge. And that's what I really love is that we don't have to wait on 
anyone to improve our systems, to help our people. Someone gives feedback, hey, it'd be really nice to have this one field in a different location or to look like this, and we can actually do it. It's not waiting on someone else to do it. It's not waiting on a programming team to do it. I've really enjoyed is the versatility it's given us as a business and it allowed us to scale as well. It sounds like the agility, the ease of configuration, of changing things combined with, as you said, the ability to scale are really crucial points for you. For sure, and also giving feedback. So lots of times certain softwares will give you feedback at the accounting level, the finance level. Hey, the finance team wants this feedback, we want all that feedback. As an operations leader, I want feedback for the whole entire group, right from the front entry level staff to management and of course finance. I can have a dashboard when someone logs in and they can know exactly what is going on, what they need to do, where they're at as association to others, and their team leader can know, their manager can know, their director can know, and then actually being able to impact doing something with the information. First, you have to know it, then you actually have to go and implement it to make a difference. Are you talking right now about reporting capabilities or something else? So reporting is definitely a part of it. So yes, we can have that reporting ability so someone can see that. Um, the views that people can see their information of what they need to work on. It's something as simple as a ticket. You know, it's overdue, where it's at. Of course, many, many systems have that functionality, but to be able to give a consistent experience to our frontline staff so that they can give a consistent experience to our customers is essential. And if they don't know how they're doing and it's not right in front of them so they can view that on a regular basis or know what they need to accomplish during that day, well, you're just hoping that they'll accomplish a few things. We'll see what they end up with and you have to be happy with that. But if you have some clear targets for individuals and they know where they're at currently and they can find out now, they can really make that difference for that customer that may be waiting or maybe expecting something that we haven't delivered on. So you're able to use the technology then to drive consistency across your organization in terms of the processes and in terms of how your folks are interacting with your customers. You know, if you have poor data, you're gonna have a poor customer experience as a whole. And so it's really essential to have that data organized right off the bat to make sure you can provide that experience to that customer. Leveraging technology, leveraging systems to get the information to where you want it so you can actually leverage that information is just so, so key. Have you seen a change in Garda World's operations and processes, greater productivity or efficiency or what have you? On the residential side of the business, traditionally you would have about two or three points of data entry, two or three different systems and their partners that would have their own systems that we have to put that information into. So we'd have a team of people making phone calls, receiving phone calls and updating information and data and so on. We built our own form that integrates right into Zoho and our partners to make sure there's one point of data entry one point of uh, the pulling of information as well into it. So what that enabled us to do is free up time for staff to, once again, instead of just doing administrative things, hey, this is just part of doing business, they can actually focus on customers. So we were able to really streamline that. So we give our frontline staff the tools, like a technician, for example, to close off his own installation, to close off his own service call, all of that while still feeding all the information we need to take care of the customer, to build the customer, and so on and so forth. The optimization um, through leveraging our systems has been massive, game changing. I can see the efficiency gains are very, very clear. Have you seen an impact on your customers, on their experience? We're using technology, whether it's a, a phone application that you can remote into your video cameras, you can lock your door for some residential applications or even commercial applications for that matter. So there's a lot of touch points that we do have with our customers. I'll give you one example of efficiencies that we've seen just simply on the billing side of things. So we do leverage Zoho Books. So a customer can have their own portal, can see their own statements can update their banking information, their payment information, can view all of that. So just something as simple as how many phone calls do businesses receive from other businesses saying, hey, I need a statement, it's my year end, I need a statement, and we can provide that to the customer at their own fingertips. They're not waiting on someone, oh, accounting will get back to you or we'll have to escalate that over to XYZ, that we can actually do that. And even if someone does make that phone call, I don't have to transfer that phone call to accounting by 
operations staff can just go in themselves, create that, send that over right away. So it's simple and easy. It's really having access. I remember when we had a CRM and financial system that was separated and it was so frustrating. Let's say an invoice is overdue. They could call and ask for a service call. We could be issuing a service call, going spending more money on that client and not collecting what we have simply because A doesn't talk to B very well. Those kind of challenges we simply don't experience. Of course, we are using both applications. We just don't experience that anymore. And because we're using both applications, our customer service side of things can take care of traditional accounting functions simply and with a one call resolution. Someone calls in and says, I have an accounting question or I have a service related question. The same individual can answer that question. And for one, it's easier for the customer. There's not, oh, who do I need to talk to to get my answer? It just streamlines that customer experience and makes it easier for the customer. So you're gaining that single source of truth from Zoho that everyone in the organization can key off of. 100%. We were at a recent sales meeting with one of our best sales members in Quebec, and we were talking about the integration, because of course there's some nerves around that. You know, we're changing softwares and so on and so forth. And he asked me a simple question like, is there an easy way to see if there's been any service work done from our service team on that client? And I was like, well, what, what do you mean? And so we explained it a little bit more, and it's just, this is a basic functionality that I forget, I, I kind of take for granted, it's to simply have a one-stop, one place for every touch point of the customer, whether it's an email, text message, phone call, whatever that may be, to make sure we have that same consistency for that customer experience. Taylor, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about your recurring revenue model. We grew that with Zoho subscriptions eight years ago from about 2,500 customers right up into 30,000 customers. And now with the integration, we'll be using Zoho subscriptions for about 80,000 customers. We are a big user of Zoho subscriptions or Zoho billing, I should say. And it's been really actually nice to scale with us. So from the Liberty Security side of the business, we've been using that for a long time. It's very simple, create at one time, makes our lives a lot easier. And now we'll be adopting it for, of course, all of GuardWorld Canada. So it's the tool itself is easy to use. And now there's actually a little bit more complexity. So with our integration, the requirements that we use subscriptions, and I was pleasantly surprised as we went through the evaluation that there were solutions to many of the questions as there's very complex service plans, add-ons, and so on, and the requirements that we needed to make sure that we can continue to use Zoho subscriptions, and we're, I'm grateful that we can continue to use it. So again, coming back to that same theme of flexibility and the agility it gives the business along with the ability to scale. 100%. For example, part of the business that we don't use in Western Canada, but our Quebec team does have, is dealers for our monitoring station. There is a subscription portion to that, and there's a lot of complexity to it uh, with different add-ons and different types of reporting that that dealer will want based on their subscriptions. And so as we went through that evaluation of our software, this was an essential piece to the puzzle. And there was a lot of questions and a lot of unknowns. And working with the Zoho team, we were able to find the solutions for a lot of the challenges we were going to face. You've really been describing the digital transformation of security services. As we finish up, what advice do you have on managing change? There's been so much change in your world it's involving as many people as possible in the process. You need buy-in from the team. You wanna be QB and march down the entire field without the team? Well, you're not gonna go very far. You need everyone to understand and see the vision, understanding where we're wanting to go with that and allowing others to have input. That's one thing I really liked with Zoho is someone would come with an idea and I could actually implement it within the hour and they could actually see that change right away and they could see that they're making an impact on that company and our company as a whole, and even the customer. We're about to go through this integration with our Eastern team. You know, of course there's nerves around it, but that's one thing that gives me confidence going into this integration is they're going to see the fruits of their own input. And as they see that, the buy-in will just increase and we'll actually create a better experience simply for our customers and for our staff because of their input. That's part of being a team. You know, you, you want that value. I mean, anyone wants to be able to create value for that company and to be able to uh, help it improve and grow. And 
to be able to have the tools that you can actually do that is very rewarding. It sounds like the ability to rapidly make those changes and rapidly adapt to evolving business needs is really foundational to this. We have to adapt, we have to evolve, we have to give the customer that information they're looking for in the experience they have. So much is demanding of our time as consumers that if it's simple and easy, it makes it a lot better experience that's what most people are looking for. That's what I'm looking for in that. Taylor Woolsey from Garda World, thank you so much for taking time to talk with us. Happy beer.